Okay, good evening everyone. Firstly, thank you very much for, for coming to this evening. Uh, my name is Chris Watkin and I'm, I'm a bit of a property journalist. I write articles um, for, for lots of property markets all around the UK. Uh, one of which <coughs> I do is help Nigel. Nigel's just outside, just uh, ushering in the, the last minute as I will introduce you to him at the end. Um, Nigel asked me to come along to you guys tonight and explain my thoughts on the Maidstone property market. Everybody has their own thoughts. You might agree or disagree with what I say, but these are what my thoughts, my intuition is telling me with, with regard to what has happened in the Maidstone property market, what is currently happening in the Maidstone property market, and the future of the Maidstone property market with specific focus on buy-to-let and investment. Uh, because this is a landlord evening. Now there's people in this room who are professional landlords all the way down to baby landlords that haven't even bought their first one. And I won't profess to know everything about buy to let. I will just tell you what I, what I know and what my intuition tells me. And the fact is I have 130 estate agents and chartered surveyors around the country and letting agents, and I can share with you what's happening around the country. Um, so the, the whole Pro, my presentation will last probably about 40 to 50 minutes. Then we'll have some any questions. Um, we've got the team from Seekers here as well. And um, there's certain stuff that I might not know about Maidstone, you know, real specific stuff like should I buy on this street or that street. I won't know that sort of le level of detail, but these guys will be able to, to help you. So I hope you get a lot from this. The event is being recorded. So if you'd like a, um, a copy of, of the DVD, I'll personally, no, I won't sign it. Um, <laughs> um, then, then do ask for it and a copy will be sent to you uh, probably in a few weeks, guys, do you think? Yeah, about that sort of time. Okay, so really at the end of the day, these are my thoughts on the Maidstone property market, where it is now and where it's going. Because at the end of the day, if you are buy-to-let investment landlords, you want to know what is the future of buy-to-let and you've got all those nasty taxes coming that the government have decided to tax you lot quite heavily on. And you want to know if the demand is going to be there. We've got the budget coming up. Is it tomorrow or a couple of days? A yeah. couple of days time. Um, although like most, most governments, they always tend to release most of it in advance. And if you actually look at what the government is saying, they reckon they're wanting to build 300,000 houses a year. At the moment, we're at, we built last year 217,000. Oh, in you come, love, don't worry. Oh, sandwiches. You didn't tell me there were sandwiches, boys and girls. Yeah, take a seat. Because if the government are going to start building a lot more houses, then I think it's important, it, does that, is that going to water down the demand for buy-to-let? Is the tax going to water down the buy-to-let? And so here we go, let's have a look and these are my thoughts. Please write any questions you've got down and we'll answer them any at the end. If I don't know the answer, I'll say so, but if I do, I'll, I'll have a go and wing it. There we go, here we go. So um, I think what we need to do first is if we're going to look for what's hap going to happen potentially in the future, we need to look in the what's happened in the past. So what we're going to do now is look at the numbers of what's happened, what's happening now and what's happened in the past. So to start off with, um, property prices since 1995 in Maidstone are 360% higher compared to they were in 1995. <coughs> if you actually look and compare that with the areas surrounding you, then, then you know, we're certainly not in the top league as, as areas go. You know, you've got your Tunbridge Wells and your Canterbury's which are in the 400% and we've got Medway at 410 and then obviously Tunbridge and Malling at 391, and the, the only area that you tend to, buy, uh, to beat is Swale. Now, interestingly, I looked at the more recent figures, and since the start of 2015, um, these are the numbers since 2015, um, Maidstone of property prices have gone up by 22.9%, uh, Ashford 18.8%, Ashford but then Swale's gone up by 28.2, which means Swale's beating you. And then Medway's at 31, Tunbridge at 24, and Tunbridge also at 24. So what you tend to find, and this happens all over the country, is that it doesn't all go up and down at the same rate. You'll have one area that tends to, to move ahead, and then another one catches it up. 
So the art there is to, is to look at where, those, where you are on the cycle and see if you can buy one on the dip so it catches up. If anyone wants to know how to find the information about what's happening in the property prices, um, a great place is the land registry. And all you have to do is you just type in land registry um, prop price index and then you type in, it, get, it turns you to a website and you put in the word um, Maidstone and the, and the date and it will show you. And then you can compare that with, with, a, with another area. If anyone at the end physically wants me to, to log on to the, to the website whilst I'm here, I can show you exactly how to do it and it's really dead, dead easy to do. But it's a good way to compare and contrast with what's happening in the property market. But remember, these are sold prices, and these are sold prices, these are land registry data, so they're already six months out of date. Because what you've got to remember with the land registry is that it takes a good three months between the property completing and it being registered on the land registry website. And even then, that the sale was agreed three months before that. So when property prices is saying property prices are up by 10% this year, in fact, it was, it wasn't in the last 12 months, you can move everything back six months. So it's always out of date. I think the best thing to do whenever looking at buy to let and, um, and, and investments, and again, it's my opinion, is go on to right move. Now, what you often find is that the British are very, very bad at negotiating. So if you've got a property that's worth £200,000 and you put it on for 220, people won't tend to offer 200, even though it's only worth 200, because they don't want to offend. Now I know that some of you in this room might offend and have a go at 180, and as my mother says, you don't ask, you don't get. But what you tend to find in, is that most, and I'm just saying the majority of the cases, most sale prices happen within a few percentage points of the, per, of the asking price. So therefore, when you go on to right move, put everything in your price order, but, but include sold a bit of contracts, because you can do that when you're searching, and you'll get a flavor of what stuff's actually selling for. Here's another quick tip for you guys out there in estate agency land, especially ones that you're buying houses as opposed to apartments. Um, any property with a south-facing garden has a north-facing front, obviously, and the north-facing front are absolute dogs to take photographs by estate agents, between months of October and March. So what you often find is, is that, um, and we've proved this so many times, um, estate agents on Rightmove have something what's called click-through rates, which basically, ev however many times the property gets presented in a, list of prop in, a, in a list of properties, and then how many people then physically click through to it. And those with blue skies have double the amount of click-through rates. So what that means to you is if you find something that's really grubby photograph because it's got a south facing rear garden, means north facing front, which means the sun never goes on the front, it'll be an awful photograph, people will ignore it, and less people clicking on it means less viewings, less offers, which means you might be able to get yourself a cracking deal. <coughs> Just a little tip for you guys. Anyway, back to this. So on the face of it, Maidstone is middle league. We've not pulled any trees up but we're not, we're not as bad as swell. What I then did is I looked at, at every single month since 1995, the number of house sales. And you can see that there's a general <laughs> trend from the, in the 90s of a general upward direction to when the 2007, when she dropped off, off the cliff. But have you noticed, and this is a real, is that every single year goes in the same pattern up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So what you'll find is, you know the old adage of stuff selling in the summer? Yeah, stuff sells in the summer. So if you want to pick yourself up a bargain, why don't you be buying stuff in the, in the bad months? When there's not much, because it's all about demand and supply. You know, you landlords are in competition with first time buyers for your, for your two bedroom apartments and the smaller houses. They're, they don't tend to, they're a bit, they hibernate. They don't tend to come out till April. So why don't you start looking in October and November? Because the most important question you should be asking a potential seller is, why are you selling? Because remember, there's two, peop, two types of movers in this world. The got to sells and the like to sells. The got to sells, death, divorce, debt, relocation. Like to sells, mm, got a two bed semi, quite fancy a three bed. You're never gonna screw a great deal on a three bedroom semi with someone that just fancies a move, but you'll certainly get a cracking deal if you can find out from the estate agent 
Why are they moving? Well, they've got a job, job uh, in Lincolnshire, where I come from. Where, when do they have to move? Well, the kid's moving into the school. And it's just going that extra mile. I think a lot of people in this world are lazy. And I'm not just saying anything in this room, but we as, we as humans are lazy and we don't ask the right questions. By building up a relationship with estate agents, you'll be amazed what deals you can get. So that's just a little tip for you there. Okay, so what I then did is I, because that was all a bit spiky and horrible, I put that into one, one, month, one year chunks. And you can see quite clearly that throughout the 90s and the 2000s, the number of property sales steadily grew. Then when things went belly up with the credit crunch in 08, 09, and we've slowly been rising ever since. This is an important factor with regard to the property market and why it is as strong as it is. I'm not saying it's mega strong, but it's certainly not weak because at the end of the day, there's less people moving. In terms of how many people were moving, Back in the 1980s, the average amount of people that were selling, people were moving on average, one in every 10 to 11 years, okay? It was going up or down, depending on which way you look at it, in the, to around one in 14 off every 15 years. Then in 2009, when, think, when the, everything fell off the cliff, it went down to one in every 20 years. And now in Maidstone, we are at around the 16, once every 16 years mark. Have you noticed that back in the good old, what you tended to find is back in the 70s and 80s, you bought the terraced house, you did it up because we had quite good high inflation, so you could keep borrowing off the back of the, of the house price growth. And you bought the terraced house and then you bought the semi, you waited, did that up, then you went and bought the, the detached house and then you bought the bigger detached house and you kept on moving up the market. What's nowadays, people tend to stay in their houses much longer. Remember, we are at every 16 years at the moment. Back in the 80s, we were every nine or 10 years. That's an important consideration with regard to the market. This is what's happened to average property prices since 1995. And again, you'll see that it is not a smooth line. You, there's, the, there's the drop off the cliff of around 17 or 18 uh, percent in 08, 09. But as you can see, we had a couple of years where it bubbled around a lot. And we've had that steady growth quite decent growth. And if you actually match up the, 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 height, the, the growth of the graph uh, in the last three or four years, it's very, very similar to what it was here. Now, what's going to happen in the future? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be stood here. I'd be a multi, multi-billionaire. But I've got my thoughts on that, which we'll come on to later. This is an interesting fact, is I've now split all the house types, all the house sales in Maidstone, and I've split them into the different types, okay? Again, what we can, with regard to this presentation, if you want the full video with all the slides, if you have a word with Nigel and get, you've given the email address when it's been produced, we'll get this out to you guys. But I think the important consideration is this, and it's a very subtle difference. Look at the pro what's happened to property prices between the different types, okay? So flats in, since 1995 have gone up by 348%, whilst terraces of 371, semi-detached 396, and detached 405. Now that's quite rare. What you tend to find in most of Britain, excluding London, is this. Terraced houses and semis have been the best performers, whilst the worst performers have been detached and, and, and apartments. So that's quite, uh, that is rare. That, that jumped out at me, that <coughs> detached houses have been the best performing type. Interesting. Okay, this is a nice graph because what I did is I looked at what's happening in terms of the type of properties selling. So we've looked at the prices of what they've been selling for. Let's have a look at what as actually the proportion of what's been selling. Now in 2008, you can see that the apartment market was only 7% of the market, but look where she is now. She, you know, she's nearly doubled. Whilst terraced houses have increased, but obviously semi-detached houses have decreased. I don't know why semis are not selling as well, or there's, that could be they're not selling as well, or there's not so many coming on the market. Don't know. We could actually find out if we have, um, maybe that's a, another presentation we could do. And then the detached houses have remained pretty stable. 
But that's really interesting, the fact that there's more apartments selling now than there was 10 years ago. Property prices in Maidstone have gone up by 5.5%, <coughs> which is not bad when you consider that inflation is around 2 2.5% at the moment. Or is it 2.9? I think it is. Okay. This is an interesting graph. Now, if you want to go look at a colour, look at the purple line, because that is the overall average. That is quite a complicated graph, but when we send this through, you'll be able to see this in greater detail. So the blue line is the overall average of how long a property takes to sell in Maidstone. So in 2007, we were looking at around an average time of 40 days. Then things went belly up in 2009, and that went from 40 days all the way up to 140 days. And then slowly but surely, she's been dropping. But can you remember I said about the number of house sales that it jumped up and down every year? Look what happens every year. It's not a steady line. So what you tend to find is, is that every autumn, the length of time it takes to sell a house goes up. Then in the summer, she drops down. So what's been happening is she's been doing that, then she drops, but we've, we've been having this. So steadily they've been dropping, but still it goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. It's like a roller coaster, but it's still going in the direction that now you can see that, it, as we are now, that the average time it takes to sell is 53 days. So there's another tip for you. Should you be buying your buy-to-let properties in the colder months, just a thought. Because they take longer to sell. If you can find out what the motivation of the, of the owner is, you might be able to get yourself a bargain. Number of properties for sale. So what we've done here is that we've looked at the types of property since 2008, and you can see that the proportion has remained roughly the same. But what I want you to look at, which is important, is, is that we had a spike of properties that came on in 08. If you took this back to 07, it should be down here. So we saw an, a huge uplift of properties coming on to the market in 2008. You see, the British have got this real problem with property prices. If you bought a property for £100,000, in the year 2000, 100,000 pounds, and in 2007 it was worth 300,000 pounds, how much money have you made? 200,000 pounds. Then if property values crashed in 2008 with the credit crunch, it went down to 250, how much money have I made? 150? No, you haven't. We've lost 50 grand because that is how people think. It doesn't matter what you bought it for, it was worth 300,000 pounds and now it's worth 250, so we've lost 50 grand. That is how the majority of homeowners think. And what happened was, is that a lot of people panicked, put their houses on the market because they weren't prepared to sell them, but not much sold. So what, what happened was you had a, a huge influx of supply of properties, but no one was buying them, Hence, prices crashed, supply and demand. Again, notice how she continued to drop until to around two, late 2015 and 2016, and she started to grow. That is, across the country, you could, um, I do this graph on 130 locations once a month, and I'll tell you here and now, the shape is almost identical, apart from London, which is a world to its own, you know, you could almost take London out M25 and, and, and move it elsewhere, move it to Dubai or somewhere. But every, any, anything outside the M25, that map is almost identical, the shape of it. The numbers are different depending on the size of the town. But what that shows is, is that there's a greater number of properties for sale. Because there's a greater supply, people don't need to pay as much because there's greater supply, so you've got more choice. So again, I think you'll find if you do your homework, you might get yourself a bit of a bargain. Again, asking if it's the right questions. Okay, so in 2001, 43,500 houses in Maidstone 
were owner-occupied, representing 77% of the market were owner-occupied. So the last set of figures was 2011, which was the census figures, which were released two years ago, two, three years ago. So yes, the numbers have changed, but it's the, it's the way the direction's going. So what I'd like, to, would anyone like to hazard a guess of where you think that figure was in t a couple of years ago? Come on, throw some numbers out just for a fun, come on. Six, so you think it, between 2001 and 2011, the number of homeowners went from 43,000 to 60,000? No, I thought 60%. 60, no, we're not doing the percentage, we're just doing the actual number. Actual, so in 2001, 43,500 households in Maidstone were homeowners. How many thousands of households were owned in 2011? Throw some numbers out. Come on, you can't, you're all going to be wrong, so we might as well get it all wrong together. 100, so you think between 01 and, and 11, it, it, it doubled the number of home ownerships. Okay, so you're almost, what you're saying is 60,000 households in Maidstone were built. Anyone else? Drop to 30. Drop to 30. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Dropped. So what number? 43 to what? 43,000? 30? 35? Should, can we have a consensus? 35 or do we want a bit more? <laughs> Made the same. So hold on a second. In 2001, when everyone was buying their houses, and then in 2011, when we turned into a nation of renters, the number of households had gone up who owned their own home. This is the bit that's going to mess your brain up. The percentage dropped. So how the hell can the percentage drop for this reason? There were 6,983 houses built in Maidstone. And what happened was, most of you lot bought them. In 2001, there were 3,700 privately rented houses in Maidstone. And in 2011, 9,256. I'm not saying all the brand new ones were built by, bought by landlords. But that slack was taken up. <coughs> Taking the average number of private rentals from 6.5 to 14.6. That is actually bang on the national average. No, tell a lie. It's, one, it's just slightly below. Can you believe it? Maidstone is below the national average. It's true. Yes. You, sorry? Yes. Yeah? Believe. There you go. <laughs> okay, so rents in Maidstone. Straw poll. Since 2008, retail price inflation has been 27.4%. So what I'm going to do is I want to know which one of these, and we'll, put, we'll do it by show of hands, which one of these do you think, re what has happened to rent since 2008? So, uh, so what we're doing is between 2008 and now, the difference. It might have gone up and down or way all over the place, but I just want to know what the difference is between two fixed dates. So who wants to go for 40.5? Got two there, two there. 32.4. Yeah, okay. Uh, 22.4. Yeah, a bit more. Uh, 21.6. Okay. 20.1. Uh, 12 and a half. <laughs> this is averages, all right? I must stress to you, there's worse performing ones and there's a hell of a lot better <coughs> performing ones. So in real terms, tenants are better off. Hell of a lot better off. So nobody ever says, you know, oh, poor old tenants. No, look, they're much better off. Okay. The percent, um, well, this is an interesting slide. I just wanted to see how Maidstone compared to the rest of Kent when it came to the percentage of private renting. And I would expect Thanet to be up there because, you know, if you go to Margate, it's, uh, and, and broad, not Broadstairs, but Margate, um, you certainly, you know, most of, the, most of the streets are privately rented. But again, Maidstone, you're not at the bottom, you're not at the top, you're in the middle. You're a bit like West Ham. 
<laughs> yes, they are actually. You can tell. Who's in the middle? Southampton. Who's in the middle? Who does football? I do. I can tell it. You tell. I don't do football. God dear. Oh, cold coffee. Right. So why is my Maidstone so good? Well, I mean, I've done some homework, and you know, it's got all the stuff. But to be brutally honest with you, so has most areas in this in the southeast. So. It's a good place to do business with. The demand is there. But again, is the demand going to continue?